And I think that means it's time for... Why don't we just do Why don't they Why just? Why don't they just? <laughs> that was maybe your worst one? I don't know. Easily? Come on, man. Come oh, on. Sorry. Ben, you're only here Give for one thing. Give it the dignity yeah. it deserves. Come on. This is your, mm. this is your is one time to is shine. It, is it even working? Why don't it. they just? Thank you so much. There we go. Way better. <laughs> now you T-Pain the hell out of that thing. <laughs> So, um, in celebration of Tim finally getting his Artemis versus <laughs> Apollo uh, video out, Space Boy, or at SpaceBurger01, yeah, both awesome cool. names, uh, he said he just watched the Artemis versus Apollo video and was wondering, why don't they just build a launch loop or a Lofstrom loop? It's supposed to be a lot cheaper to build, send cargo to space, and technology to build is also there. I don't know what that is. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, okay. I don't know what the law. <laughs> Maybe we should oh. have. Uh, oh, is that yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Is that why you always make me go first? Because you're like looking the stuff up. Is that? <laughs> we, do we just we just figure it out? Basically, yeah, there's a secret. No, guys. Basically, a loss from loop is essentially think of a hyperloop, like uh, you know, a, a vacuum tube that starts at ground and goes up really high, and then so you're just launching something like a mag mm. mag rail, basically, and then in a yeah. So it's basically a rail gun. Yeah, the but the thing is that it actually basically. does do a, like, actually loops. So I don't know why exactly, but it's a 2,000 kilometer long track that's 80 kilometers high. So I think we can start there with why don't they just do a 2,000 kilometer <laughs> long track that's 80 kilometers high. Do you happen to have, like, a, a photo? Yeah, let me pull up. 80 this kilometers high? Show? What does that mean? That's, <laughs> like, whatever, 45, 50... 50 miles, 50 miles above the earth. And and the tallest thing we've ever built is like a quarter of a kilometer, maybe? So, yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, I, I gotcha. Okay. Right there is our, your number one reason, just logistics. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I mean. Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah. I mean, it seems like way, <laughs> way too much work. I, I do think that there's the concept of like, at some point kind of from Andy Weir's book, if we're on the moon and there's like even, you know, people living on the moon full time, like I think in the book, uh, isn't the main character, she was born on the moon kind of a thing. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. if, mm -hmm. if there's stuff like that, I, I do think we'll need some kind of, um, not like more, more routine, more mundane, like simpler way to get there than launching a rocket with all this propulsion and all this stuff. Um, cause you know, like launching rockets is still incredibly like r risky, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we, it, it's not as, as great and as better as we've got over however long, 50, 80 years we've been doing it or whatever. We're nowhere near it being like, like an airplane, you know, where you're just mm -hmm. like, don't even think about the dangers of it. You're like, yeah, it's fine. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know about this idea at all, but I think something along those lines would be useful and. 60 years from now just like oh yeah to get to the moon you just hop on this thing and it's like it's no big deal yeah well so in the, in the video that i did about the space shades i talked about putting a something like that on the moon mm -hmm. and the thing there is you don't have to build it 20 kilometers high or whatever because there's no atmosphere it could just be it could just you know have the right angle mm -hmm. and if you get up to the right speed then you can you know hit escape velocity um, and I, I think that's not the worst idea for, you know, putting things into deep space from the moon or something, you know, just to kind of use that velocity of the moon already going around the earth and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, but yeah, here on earth, um, I mean, it's almost space elevator yeah. level of construction and engineering that would be required. Mm -hmm. And, uh, is it, is the technology there? Yeah, maybe, but I mean... Again, like the tallest thing we've ever built is like a f the, the like one well one tenth of that and, or something. I mean, and it's just a huge target. Thing. Come on, I mean, it, it's too dangerous. I would say because oh, if somebody were to like sabotage it or something, uh, we're just too stupid as a as an <laughs> animal to like get over ourselves and like come together on something like this. I just have <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially yeah. lately. I don't have a lot of faith in humanity that like oh yeah you know hey I'm gonna you know shoot you but that thing's fine. I don't care. That thing's cool. We're all good with that. Yeah. But hey, don't you step on my my yard? You know, <laughs> like right. I don't I don't see this so well, the 
societal <laughs> thing working out before this gets done? Um, the Large Hadron Collider. Okay, let's just let's just okay. The Large Hadron Collider cost about five billion dollars, basically, right? And that's a that's how big is that loop? What ten kilometers, maybe, or something? Like, it's not a huge loop. Something like that. I know they're 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 talking about a hundred kilometer one, which is vastly bigger. So like yeah, ten, 10 times might be. bigger. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so and that's underground where you know it's so okay. It's a sixteen miles. So what is that like twenty five kilometers basically? Right. Yeah, um, okay. Loop is how big the large hadron collider is. Okay, so if we're still making a loop, it's it's going to be simpler technology than than this because the large hadron collider has to have like you know totally. Vacuum, hydrogen, something crazy, purge, nitrogen, super cooled, everything, magnets, all the stuff. Um, it's kind of insane. And then, like, the actual device that that the receiver, like, the camera, basically, system of the collider is absolutely bonkers. So, obviously, there's some mm -hmm. cost in that. But to then do something like this on a scale 100 times bigger, that's also, like, precariously dangling 80 kilometers above the ground, you know, like, and all these things. I just... what What's the... How many times did you have to launch something to have that pay off that infrastructure? And building. what is the actual cost of running something like that too? Like maintenance, you know, think about how expensive it is to keep a, a simple highway of just concrete running for a decade. You know, mm -hmm. now think about this huge thing and then having these fast moving things going through it at, you know, thousands of kilometers an hour to make it worth anything. It has to be able, capable of flinging something out of it at, at least 20,000 kilometers, really, to really make it even begin to make any difference, right? So we're talking about something moving... also weather. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about something shooting inside it that's going already five times, eight times faster than a bullet constantly or whenever you're using it. Like, I just don't... Uh, personally, I just... It, that, that type of stuff just doesn't really scale up. Like, is it easier to make a rocket a little bit bigger or is it easier yeah. to drop a small <laughs> rocket off of a plane? Like, that type of argument, you know? Like... Mm -hmm. like there's always yeah. going to be you know pros and cons and eventually it's like we're getting these things to be really cheap you know propulsion rockets if starship works out as it is planned like that will be really hard to argue why you would want to you know it's just, uh, to be able to get that kind of mass into orbit cheaply energy wise like i just and investment wise i just don't see how you could get that to pay off I have another right. thought on that and kind of the propulsion side of it that, that you mentioned because so the, would this thing would reach into space nearly I mean virtually a vacuum 80 kilometers is surely high enough but I mean fire a vacuum optimized engine and stuff this thing isn't mounted on the ground is it I thought this mm -hmm. was like the sky crane thing that's like no it's mounted it's to the in ground. space Oh, no, that's dumb. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's zero chance. Uh, but uh, someone find this because I'm sure someone has it. But if we could actually, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but if you can have the sky crane thing where part of it is in space and then part of it dips into Earth, how does that work with the atmosphere, by the way? Like, how is it okay? Um, but okay, if, like imagine if you had like a you know a straw that's that part in space, part in bar, inside of our atmosphere. Wouldn't that create a vacuum sucking stuff out, kind of like a siphon? And and if so, like the difference in pressure there, y I imagine you could get turbines to spin as a result. And well, with that, a, couldn't you could have energy? Free if you energy, just had a t if you took a tube to in space and it was long enough to be able to dip halfway in space and halfway out of space, yeah, self regulate. Just like just like taking okay. a straw and putting it into a glass. It's not like all of a sudden all the water goes <laughs> shooting out the top or something. Like uh, it just okay. slowly fills okay. and equilibrates and it's no big deal. You know, like it's going mm. to just be changing pressure and getting greater pressure at the bottom and, and remain in a vacuum at the top. It's if it's big enough to do mm. that at that scale, like there's no scale in which you could create like a venturi effect or something out of our own atmosphere like it's just yeah because it, it what happen. got me thinking about that was uh dustin smarter every day's uh baseball cannon thing i don't yeah. know if you guys saw that video yeah, that that, was cool. yeah. but but like the whole idea is like and i guess this is like how a lot of these guns work is like you just create a huge amount of pressure on one side and then you you pop the plug and it just sucks all of it out and that's what creates the force to shoot things mm -hmm. and yeah. i was thinking imagine if you could have something like that in between space and earth that was a constant difference in pressure 
you'd be able to basically use that as a way to generate energy. Hmm. Oh, now you're sounding like a free energy guru or something. <laughs> yeah. Doing uh, what I can. I'm trying. I'm thinking of everything <laughs> now. <laughs> but but the uh, the idea is like, at the, uh, what what is the the trade off? You know, the the cost analysis of like. How much yeah. mass would you have to put in space to make it cost, you know, to be able to run this thing, build this thing, engineer this thing, operate it? Like, at what's the, like, the eventual threshold? Is it, like, 10 launches and this thing pays off? Because, sure, let's do it tomorrow. Is it 100 launches? Is it 10,000 launches, you know? And what's, uh, I'm sure people have run those numbers of approximation and it just has not closed anywhere near, especially yeah. as rockets get cheaper. But eventually, I mean, sure, why not type of thing? But th we're talking about something at a scale never been built before at all. Like, this would be by far the most ambitious human project uh, mm -hmm. by three orders of magnitudes, you know, as far as sheer scale and, yeah. I mean, the monorail in Las Vegas went bankrupt. I mean, so there's no way this <laughs> yeah. works, right? <laughs> may, may, if, if, we're, if all of humanity is going to come together to work on some kind of project, could we maybe decarbonize? Right. Yeah. Can we maybe focus on that? It seems like more of a, a pressing issue. It right. Seems like. Yeah. My, my favorite of, of these kinds of questions is, and, and I'm trying not to be rude, but I've had multiple people ask me this. Why don't they just build a rocket pad on Mount Everest? Right. And I'm like, well, I think the main problem is that you would be building it on top of hundreds of dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Because just getting to the top of Mount Everest, Everest is, is a Herculean feat. Yeah. You think you're going to build it? How would you get the rocket to the top of it to launch it up from there anyway? Yeah. And well, then, you would fly and then the rocket what, it, and land it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Refuel it. And then and on yeah, top like, of all that, it saves you, what, like that much of the atmosphere right. that you have to get out of? It's not actually... And then, like, know. what if there's a problem with the ground? Like, you, every time you launch a rocket, there's, like, ground systems. There's a team of hundreds of people that are, like, fixing all the stuff that broke from the previous launch. Like... You have to now send all those guys up yeah. to Mount Everest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that you saved 1% of your rocket. Like, why not just make, well, 1% yeah. bigger rocket? Yeah. The, that I mean, was the even, thing. Even with, like, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, that was the thing that, that got me and Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about again was if the Earth was a marble, it would feel incredibly smooth. It would feel like if Earth was the size of a marble and you could hold it, mm -hmm. it would feel just like a, a marble, even billion, given all these mountains and stuff. A, uh, like, a, cue ball is actually more coarse than the earth yeah. is right yeah so we we can think of like these giant mountains and all this stuff but compared to the scale of earth it's actually nothing, nothing you know nothing yeah. i saw somebody uh, was able to prove that kansas is actually flatter than a pancake yeah yes <laughs> yes Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.